Welcome to another episode of Know Your DN. I'm your host, Mark Christopher. Today, we'll learn how tool management function works on your IHMI control. This is a feature that was developed by Fanuc and is really handy for a lot of reasons. You can easily set up tool groups or family tools, and setting up your tool life management has been made really easy. Also, it's easy to keep tools organized and defined, and if you're simulating your program, you can easily define your tools here. Let's go over how to use this feature so that your tool management can be maximized on your IHMI control. Today, I'm on a DNM 5700, but the tool management format is universal across our machining centers and our turning centers. The very first page we come to is just an overview page. As you can see, I have some tools and tool groups already defined, but I wanted to show you this page to go over what you can do really quick without going through each individual tool. Here, once you press the edit button, you can change the name of your tool, and you can also quickly change the T code your tool is registered to. For simulation purposes, you can also change the description of the tool. I will show you later on in this video where you can change these same settings if need be. Last, on this page, you can see if tool life management is being used for a particular tool group. Don't miss this important point. The tool life management only works if you call the tool group, not just the individual tool number. So for example, if I'm calling tool number three and I want to track my tool life for that tool, my code will look like this. T1003M6 end of block, G43H3 end of block. When the machine puts the tool in the spindle, your current tool life for that tool will populate on the overview page. If you only do a regular tool call, the tool life will not populate and the machine will ignore any tool life data you have entered. Later in the video, we will go over how to manipulate the tool life. I won't cover every button in this menu today, but if I scroll over one page by pressing the arrow button, you see the add tool button, the copy, paste, and delete buttons. There's also a group reset button. The add tool button allows you to either add another group or add another tool to an existing group. You notice that if you press tool, it will add it to the existing group you have highlighted. If you say add group, it will ask you what you want this group number to be labeled as and what T code or which tool will be assigned to this new group. The copy and paste buttons simply copy an existing tool or entire group, allowing you to paste that information as a new tool group or paste that tool into an existing tool group. This is an easy way to move your tools around into other groups, saving their existing information without having to re-enter that information twice. It's just a good time saver. The delete button is also useful when cleaning up your tool manager page. It gives you some options. You can highlight a group and press the delete button and it will then present you with three more buttons. The software is asking you if you want to delete the current tool, the current group, or the entire tool manager. Be careful right here. If you press the all data button and confirm with an okay, all of your tool information is toast. So now let's highlight the tool we want to manipulate. Press individual settings and let's look at how easy it is to start setting up the information for this tool. On the first page you come to, you can go ahead and name your tool. Here, I will call this one half inch end mill. The next thing I want to set is count or time. Just double click the box and a drop down menu will appear. Most of the time on things like end mills, we would set tool life in time, which is measured in minutes. As soon as the machine sees a feed move after the tool change, it will start recording the usage until it gets a spindle stop command. If you set the tool to count, which we typically use for drills or taps, it will count the tool as one usage with each tool change. If you need to reset the tool life, simply go back to your overview page, arrow over one time, press group reset, then press current group and a message will pop up telling you the group number you're about to reset. It will also tell you that the tool life state will turn to tool life remaining. That tool life count will become zero and the tool change signal will be turned off. Press okay 
and you will notice that all of your tool life information goes away on the overview page. Your tool life limits have not changed and you can see this under individual settings. Last, we can upload an image of our tool. All you have to do is double tap the information box. Another window will pop up and typically these pictures will come from a USB or memory card. Press the select folder button second from the left in the bottom corner. Now I'm going to choose my USB. The format of the picture has to be a PNG picture file. JPEGs and other formats are not compatible. I will select the picture I want to associate with my tool and say OK. And it will associate the picture with my tool. Now, if we choose the number one, this is the first tool in my tool group. If this was the second tool in my tool group, it would be a two. Here, it just has your inner group number, which is your first tool in the group, and then the T code. We are setting up tool number two, so we will set the T code to two. Next in our tool tree is tool. So let's highlight that. The very first thing we want to set is the offset number. I am using tool number two, and I'm going to use offset two. As soon as I input two, you'll notice that all of my tool offset information automatically populates. All of this information is pulled from the tool offset table. If you need to access the tool offset table, you can press the tool slide button and it will take you to the offset table. Inside the offset table, you can navigate back to the tool manager by scrolling over one page and pressing tool manager. Now that I am back in the tool manager, I need to set my tool information that pertains to simulation. The control will ask you for the information to define the tool. First is the tool type, and if I need to change it from what I had selected in my opening page, I can do that. Then it's all tool information from there, teeth, attach position, cutting angle, nose angle, and so forth. Tool definition boxes will be changed depending on your tool type. So, depending on my tool, I will fill in the necessary information for each tool. Last on this page, you can insert the tool model number to make reordering easier. Also, here you can upload pictures of your tool parts like screws, shims, or tool inserts needed for a particular tool. You can also put up to five notes or comments about this particular tool. All of this is to aid operators in their day-to-day -day jobs and make organization and communication that much easier. The last thing I want to do is show you how to save all of this information, or if you need to upload an existing tool file, how to do that. This is great for having a backup to go to, or if you're going to run this particular part down the road, you can save your tool data and then re-upload it, then just touch off your tools and let the machine ink. Over on the right ribbon of soft keys is a button with what looks like the controller with some arrows and a data sheet. Press this button and then you will see two options at the bottom left of the screen that say import or export. If I am going to export the file, I will press that and then it will ask me which files I want to send to my USB. I will put the machine in edit mode if it is not already and select all the files that I want to export and press the execute button. Typically, I press the Select All button so I get all the information associated with the Tool Manager page. But if you only need certain pieces of data, you can select or deselect those here. Now, just press the Execute button and the files will be transferred to the USB drive you put in your control. Import works the exact same way. Choose the files you want to import and press Execute. That's it. You're now able to get your tool groups, your tool life, and your overall organization of your tools on your IHMI control set up. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Please like and follow this channel for more videos and information, and feel free to suggest a future topic in the comments. Also, give us a follow on Instagram and LinkedIn at DN Solutions America. If you have a cool part or a video that you would like to highlight, tag us and include the hashtag DN House. I'll see you next time and thank you again for watching and keep those spindles turning.